This is Anfisa from Retina Coach, and today I will talk about the general principles and steps of vitrectomy for retinal detachment repair on the example of macula on regmatogenous retinal detachment. First step of vitrectomy is cannulas insertion. In this case, the patient is phakic, thus three cannulas were placed four millimeters from the limbus, one for infusion, one for instruments like vitrector, forceps or flute needle, and one for the light. Before opening the infusion system inside the eye, essential to check that infusion was placed into the vitreous cavity and not under the detached retina, because entering fluid under the retina will worsen the retinal detachment. More than three cannulas can be inserted if needed, depending on the case and surgeon preferences. The next step of retinal detachment repair case is a core vitrectomy. Core vitrectomy is a debulking of the central part of the vitreous. This step is important for removing of any vitreous structures on the retina, allowing safe instruments insertion during the surgery and creating the space for dye injections. After core vitrectomy, posterior vitreous detachment should be provided or confirmed. In previous videos, I talked about PVD induction techniques and chromovitrectomy. In this case, triamcinolone was injected to confirm the posterior vitreous detachment had already happened and no residual undetached cortical vitreous have been remained. The optional step of the surgery is internal limiting membrane peeling. Here you can see an injection of brilliant blue G dye for ILM staining. It is believed that ILM peeling during retinal detachment repair prevents the formation of postoperative macular epiretinal membrane. Important to note that studies that compared vitrectomy with and without ILM peeling for retinal detachment have reported controversial outcomes. Thus, it depends on retinal surgeon preferences to peel or not to peel ILM. The goal of the surgery for retinal detachment is to achieve successful retinal reattachment by treating all retinal breaks and relieving all vitreous structures. Therefore, shaving of the vitreous base with a scleral depression 360 degrees to remove any peripheral traction is a worthwhile step of the surgery. The next step is subretinal fluid drainage and retinal flattening. Multiple techniques exist to achieve this goal. Further, I will talk about these techniques. Current video shows that retinal flattening is achieved by fluid air exchange and simultaneous passive aspiration of fluid from the vitreous cavity and subretinal space by a flute needle. You can see that the cannula tip placed above the retinal tear to avoid retinal incarceration. After retinal reattachment, and the laser should be done to create a barrier around the retinal breaks. In our case, laser was done 360 degrees. Scarring of laser burns allows coral retinal adhesion only after around two weeks. Thus, another crucial step in treating retinal detachment is using an endotamponate until the scars around the retinal breaks become stable. Cannulas removal completes the case and sclerotomy suturing is optional. Self-sealing of sclerotomies in small gauge vitrectomy allows to leave them unsutured, like you see in this video. Visit our retinacoach.net website and also subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay updated on all our latest videos. Thank you for your attention.